So that's a cool example. Of All right, now, but what I wanted to talk about now, uh, in the amount of time we have left, is I wanted to talk about, um, well, I wanted to talk about cryptographic protocols, which I started talking about. Cryptographic protocols are this, this sort of wrapper around a crypto system. So you've seen RSA, that's a piece of maths that's hard to undo. And that's got fairly well, I was going to say well understood mathematical properties, conjectured to be well understood mathematical properties. We think we know what we take to break it, and we think we know where its strengths and weaknesses are. We don't know if it can be broken. There's things about it we don't know, but it's fairly well understood, and we are pretty sure at the moment that other than by brute force or sped up variants of brute forces, no one can break RSA. Um, but a, a, a protocol is like wrapping that up in everything you do, because there's no point having RSA being completely perfect if you stick your private key on a post-it note and carry it around with you everywhere and everyone can read it, then the protocol that the whole thing's wrapped up in is a weak protocol. Or well, one example I once saw was everyone, have you seen, you can get these little RSA tokens that generate a sequence of known random numbers over time and it changes constantly. And to log in, you've got to do some sort of challenge response to the system. So to, does anyone have this for their banking, for example, an RSA token? Does anyone have an RSA token on them now? It just generates, a, you've seen them. They generate sequences of random numbers and to log in, you, at that exact instant, you have to type that number in. So it means you're authenticated not only by knowing a secret, but by having something. You know, the idea of authentication is you want to authenticate in as many different ways as possible and authenticating by something you have as well as by something you know is called two-factor authentication. That's much stronger just on something you know because knowledge can be leaked. Things you have are harder to steal over the internet. You can steal it physically, but yeah. So anyway, it's a reasonably good protocol except it can be poorly implemented because the first time I ever saw an RSA tag, I was walking down Kent Street in the city and a whole lot of fat computer guys were sitting at a table in big suits, expensive fat computer guys, uh, drinking cafe lattes or something, talking on their mobile phones and being really important. Obviously from one of the large financial institutions really nearby and obviously senior and very important people. And one of them had an RSA token on his keychain and he just left it hanging down so I could see his numbers. So I just did a practice to see how alert he was. I got out um, a pretend mobile phone. I don't have a mobile phone, but I got out something that looked like a mobile phone. Maybe it was a calculator. And I just, I stood really right next to him and I spoke into the phone. I said, uh, 5214976387. And then I said the next number, 12476. I mean, he wasn't facing me. He was facing the other direction. But they didn't notice. And I stood there for about a minute just saying his numbers as they came up. So if I had an accomplice inside, we'd have cracked their system. And certainly I could have come back the next day with an accomplice and yeah, yeah. So the idea of this token is brilliant, but the protocol implementation, completely crap. So protocols can often be weak. Now I'd like to talk about an interesting protocol, which I really love. And then I'm gonna show you a quick video of a movie that's all about protocols. All the, this video is all about protocols. Uh, and it's very fun. Uh, the first protocol I, I wanna talk about, I had a, a whole heap of protocols. I don't think I've got time to talk about them all. The, the first protocol I'm going to talk about, and maybe this will be the only one, is the Byzantine general problem. Oh, I like to call it the Byzantine general problem. I don't know what its real name is. Byzantine means evil people trying to break the system. You've got, um, you've got some dude on a mountain over here, and he's the leader of an army. Well, <laughs> that's not the right way of drawing it, is it? He's at the back. <laughs> and you've got another dude over here, and he's got another big army. And they're friends. Or they love each other. So they're together. And now down here we have a little peaceful village, which also has, for some reason, an army. <laughs> now the idea is, if they both attack at the same time, their numbers are greater, and they will defeat the village. But if just one side attacks, despite the incredible momentum they'll have at the bottom, they're not sufficiently powerful enough to overcome the village, and they will lose. So it's very important, if we're going to attack, that both people attack at the same time. Sadly, and this is how the universe always is, the valley is filled with a dust storm. So these guys cannot communicate. They know before they go up to the top of the hill that they're going to have this problem. They're each going up their own separate ways. They agree on a protocol in advance. This is the first round when Dracula can't see. No one knows what they're agreeing. The guys in the village don't know the protocol. They can agree on whatever protocol they want. And this guy has an infinite supply of pigeons 
homing pigeons which will go over here, and this guy has an infinite supply of homing pigeons which love this mountain. So they can communicate by pigeons, but you know, pigeons are pretty stupid, they don't always get through. So what, you tell me, what protocol are you going to use? Someone suggest a protocol. So we're going to win, we're not going to lose. No, no, not SSL, we've got pigeons. This is in the pre-computer days. So you just got to, what messages are you going to send? The SSL gives you confidence. No, stop that. IP over pigeons. That's not a real protocol. No, no, no but let's just think, let's just think. Before we jump into solutions, what we've always got to do is think, what's the actual problem we're trying to solve? The problem isn't a problem of confidentiality. We don't care if the people down here know what's going on or not. The problem is a question of reliability. I'm not going to attack unless I'm sure you're going to attack. You know, do you ever do that like there's a bully beating up a kid? A gang of you weedy people are standing around the bully. You go, let's all get him. <laughs> he can't stand up against us all. Everyone goes, yeah, let's get him. One, two. And then you go forward and you look back and they're all gone. And the bully comes around and goes, hey, what do you want? And you go, ah. OK, so you cannot have that situation. You're only going to step forward if everyone steps forward. So we've got to get reliability of stepping forward. Yes? I think it's impossible for there to be a good protocol, but a bad protocol would be to say, OK, I'll send a pigeon. And then when you get the pigeon, you attack. But the thing is, we don't know if you get the, I don't know if you get the pigeon. I don't know yes, this is the, yeah, you're seeing the fundamental problem here. Don't know if I've got the pigeon coming down yep. There. So this is, this is the fundamental problem. I, I say, I'll attack. Just before I attack, I send a pigeon. I wait for a few seconds for you to get the pigeon. And then I go down and attack, and you go down and attack. And that's going to work 99 times out of 100. But what's the problem? You might not get the pigeon. You know, pigeons are stupid. They might run into this heart and knock themselves out. The dust storm could carry them away. There's a small chance you don't get the pigeon. So what are you going to do? The guy, you need to change the medium. We can't, unfortunately, change the medium yet. We'll change it in a minute. But let's solve it for pigeons and mountains first. You could say, all right, this guy sends a pigeon across. And, and then this guy sends a pigeon back saying, I received a message. An acknowledgment, an act, that's called. So then. This guy, when he gets the pigeon, he knows this guy's got the message, so he goes down to attack. So we're cool? What is it? Yeah. It takes too long for the pigeon to get across. Oh, let's ignore timing. Yeah, yeah. The, the pigeon might take too long, all sorts of things. Yeah, yeah. But, <laughs> yeah, yeah. So you say something like, I'll send a pigeon across, and the pigeon will say, let's attack at 10. And you send him across at 8 o'clock. And he sends it back, going, yeah, OK, 10 it is. And you go, now, can you attack at 10? No, why can't you attack at 10? No, you didn't get intercepted because you got it. Oh, okay. the, other oh, the other guy doesn't. No. The other guy doesn't know you got it. Ah. So you could send a message back saying, "Yeah, I got it." <laughs> yeah. What about a timeout? A timeout. Uh, okay. I'll send a pigeon. Uh, I send a pigeon saying, "I'll attack at 10, unless I hear back from you saying no by nine o'clock." And then. This guy knows if you don't send one back before 9 o'clock saying uh, no, you know he's going to attack. So you can safely attack. And you can do it by not sending a message. Why is that not a good protocol? If, you, if, if the guy didn't even get the message, you'll assume that he would attack. If the guy didn't even get the initial message yeah. su suggesting that protocol. Yeah. Oh, well, no, you would, all right. You can, have it, you can agree on the protocol down the bottom before you go up. Yeah, you Let's attack at 10 unless one of us sends the other one a pigeon. Oh. Then if you don't send a pigeon, OK, so we could send 100 pigeons all saying attack at dawn. And he sends 100 back saying, OK, I got it. And you receive 99 of these, and he receives, I don't know, 100 of those. Can you attack now? Yeah, it says attack at dawn. And he gets 99 and sends, sends 100 back saying attack at dawn. Yeah, OK, I'm going to attack at dawn. Yes? Oh, yes. <laughs> if you can talk when you're at the bottom, that's a brilliant idea. I like what's your name? Tim. Tim said, oh, that's right. Yeah, I remember. Uh, Tim said, um, uh, yeah, why don't we just agree at the bottom we'll attack at dawn? Sadly, we didn't think of that. We invented a stupid protocol. But maybe, uh, you know, but maybe there's a reason for that. The same reason we don't, when we share a key, we don't actually give them the message. You might say, why bother sharing a key? Why not just give the message then? Maybe we needed to know information, like we didn't know how long it would take us to get to the top or something. Yeah, yeah. yeah, we might need to change it based on circumstance. Is that what you're saying? Yes, that's right. So we might, we, yeah, so we might want to update things up here. So m maybe, maybe for some reason we can't just rely on what we worked out on the bottom. But we'll come back to that in a sec, because that's a good point. Why not just work it out up front? So what, can anyone see a problem with the send 100 
across and then send 100 acts? Why do we even need to send 100 back, actually? We only need to send one back? Well, you got to send 100. So, all right, so we send 100 across here, and then we send 100 across there. So, no, but tell me why we needed to send the second 100. But you sent 100, isn't that good enough? Yeah, but that guy doesn't know you could receive him, so you just send 100 back. And then you just send 100. But it's the same problem. But that's the same then. If the first 100 isn't good enough, how come the 100 going back is good enough? Can I, can I say that there's a chance, it's only very, very remote, that sending 100 pigeons won't, that they'll, none of them will work. You know, maybe there's an EMP going off somewhere, and you know, pigeons are sensitive to that. Because, uh, you know, the, when no one knows how pigeon homing works, but there are always all these crazy sort of semi-scientific reports about uh, various things the go government do and pigeon, homing pigeons not working anymore. So uh, who knows what's going on there. Uh, certainly I blame the US government every time I get lost. <laughs> so it's possible all 100 could get lost. Um, so can I just suggest to you that there's this interesting thing that so students over the years have proposed all sorts of brilliant protocols to me. Messages saying do something if nothing happens and messages saying do something if something does happen and acts and acts which include the acts. And sometimes you acknowledge the message with, by rewriting the message inside the message you're just sending. And then the initial message might be as soon as we reach seven levels of nesting, we can attack. We'll agree we've got it. And then you just, every time you get the message, you nest it inside and send it to the other guy. And you keep going for 100 levels. So you know you've both seen it nested up to 100 times. And the protocol is you can attack as soon as you've seen it nested seven times. And you know then each has seen it seven times. So you know what the other guy knows. Problem? What's this? Yeah, it's great. Uh, homing pigeon. You say it. <laughs> oh, you didn't. I can't read it. It's too small. Morning edition, September the 10th, 2009. South Africa's leading internet service provider is facing some unexpected competition. A financial services company, frustrated with super slow internet speed, decided to try a homing pigeon instead. It strapped a memory card to the leg of a bird. By the time it arrived at the data's destination, 50 miles away, the internet had managed to send only 4% of the information. <sighs> they're sending, that is very clever. So they're sending memory sticks on the legs of pigeons and that's faster than the, we used to call that sneaker net which in the old days of tapes, you just load all the tapes in the back of your car and drive where you wanted to take the data, unload them, and, and, and that was faster than the bandwidth available at the time. Never underestimate the bandwidth of a station wagon loaded with data tapes was a <laughs> motto of the old days. Okay, yeah, look, but can you see, the, can I just suggest to you that it turns out the astonishing thing, none of these protocols actually work. And a, a, a basic sort of proof is this. Think of any protocol being a sequence of messages you're all required to send. Was the last message, of the, look at the last message of the protocol. Was that needed? If not, omit it. And keep doing that until you get the smaller set of messages that you need. Now look at the last message of the protocol. You cannot tell that it got through. So it actually doesn't matter what you use, it's actually impossible to communicate with pigeons. But it's worse than that, because what if we had radios instead of pigeons? So we go, attack at dawn, okay, gotcha, all right, I heard you, gotcha, okay, I heard you, gotcha, 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 so we're going to attack now? Yeah, we're going to attack now. You don't know, even if your, your messages are traveling at the speed of light over wireless radios, you still don't know that the very last thing got through. So maybe you say attack at dawn and the other guy doesn't hear it. And you send an acknowledgement back over the radio, but maybe just as you send it, he doesn't hear it. So he sends an acknowledgement. You still can't tell, even with the speed of light and getting rid of pigeons, you still actually can't tell that the final message got through. And it's even worse than that. What if I'm just there at the bottom talking to you? And I'm saying, OK, Liam, we're going to attack at dawn. How do I know that he knows that we're going to attack at dawn? I say something. You say what? I understand. OK. How do you know that I got your I understand? Um, I, I smile. <laughs> okay. How do I know that you understood what my smile meant? <laughs> it's actually, it turns out, impossible to communicate. <laughs> Which we geeks have known for years. Okay. So yeah, 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 yeah. So uh, protocols are quite funny. Now I had a, um, a very quick challenge to give you based on Stargate SG-1. Here's how it goes. And I want you to think about this. I want you to think about this over the uh, ensuing week. 
This is based on an episode of Stargate SG-1 I saw years ago. I've only seen one or maybe two episodes in my life, so I can't remember any of the characters or anything. And I know one of them really pissed me off. He was really too confident and he really annoyed me. I don't like really confident. It was a major or a colonel or someone like that who just thought he was very good. I'm sure he was paid more than everyone else in the movie. And he certainly <laughs> felt he was... Oh, anyway, he's probably the world's nicest guy. I only saw one show. What am I doing projecting like this? OK, so this guy goes through a big, uh, enormous tunnel thing and goes into another world and then comes back. I don't want to spoil it for you, but that's what happens. He comes back through this big, enormous tunnel. But when he comes back, no one can see him. So he's walking up to people going, hello, I'm back. And they're all going, where's the arrogant major? He didn't come back. And, no, I, I am back. Ha, 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 ha. I can't see the arrogant major. He's gone. And he's going, no, I'm here, I'm here, everyone. Can't anyone see me? And somehow he's been shifted out of phase or the phases were reconnected to the teleport system or something crazy happened. And no one can see him, but he's there. He can see and hear everyone, but no one can see him. But if I remember the episode right, and my memory is terrible, there's someone from that world has come back too, a suspicious looking man. And we soon realise that the suspicious looking man can see the invisible major, general, whatever he is, and no one else can. Does that make sense? So that's the setup. So can they see the suspicious Yeah, the suspicious, everyone's going to the suspicious man, where is he? And the suspicious man might, for example, say, oh, he's right next to you, can't you see him? Because the suspicious man can see him and talk to him, but no one else can. Now, here's my challenge for you. What protocol could they use at this exact instant? If you were the invisible general, uh, no, suppose you were the invisible man, or suppose you were the major that has to talk to the invisible man, what protocol could you use to communicate with each other reliably? And you might have to communicate something about the suspicious character. You might really want to know if the suspicious character can be trusted or not. But your messages are passing through this suspicious medium, okay? You've got an untrusted medium. What protocol could you follow? And I don't want you to say SSL or something crazy like that. I just want something that you could really do with words at that exact instant so you could communicate to each other and sort the problem out. So the, part one of the problem really is working out what are the properties you want this communication to have. What's, what are the important things? Authentication, confidentiality, integrity. What, what things do you want? And the second thing is working out a common everyday way you could achieve these uh, you know, in a future where you can move through stars and things. <laughs> but not using anything. Don't tell me now. T tell me down the front, because I want everyone to think about it. But think about this puzzle, and next week I'll, I'd love to hear what you guys have thought. Okay. Thank you very much, and I'll see you next week. And have fun on your project this weekend. <laughs>